J.R. Hudson. Um, I'm a music producer. Uh, I started as an artist. Um, I started in a group, then I got a solo deal, put out a couple records. I really love being in the studio, and those deals allowed me to meet other artists, and I realized that that's really what I wanted to do. Um, so I've been producing records for about 10 years. Uh, in the last three to four years, I would say, I've uh, made a foray into executive producing albums. Uh, so that's a little bit of what I do. So as an executive producer, kind of what's, what's your role? What separates you from being just a regular producer on the album? What's all the responsibilities that goes into you know, having that title of executive producer? Um, it, in my experience, the executive producer is basically all responsibility <laughs> falls on you. Like, you know, you pretty much, it's good to be a jack of all trades. It's good to be organized because all of the loose ends and all of the coordinating and pretty much everything that goes into getting the album from point A to point Z will fall on you. Okay, so that, that tells just to clarify that, like, are you in charge of like doing the engine, like picking the engineers, songwriters, everything from the whole production, or? Yeah, I ultimately on this last album I did, um, it was probably the the biggest job. You know, I've done a couple records, but this last one's probably the biggest job. But yeah, ultimately all of the decisions, all of those types of decisions, I had the final say. So it all kind of was my responsibility. And so when you do that, like, do you have a go-to camp of songwriters and? You know, engineers, mixers, that like these are my people I work with on the regular, or does it come like down from label influence, maybe perhaps? Like these are the people we want you to work with? Yeah, I, I, um, I learned early on that it's very smart as a producer to have a team of people that you can count on because the, the whole name of the game for production, I mean, having talent is great and being able to make beats is great, but when you start to get in demand, the name of the game is being able to deliver. So you really have to have people around you that you can trust, that will come through, that are also talented, but also have their head on straight. When you pick up the phone, no matter what time, they'll be there. And you know that they know how to work, interact with whoever you bring them to. So you just want to establish a good reputation. So I don't take a job unless I can use my team. What's like one of the things as an executive producer that you come across that may be like your biggest hardship or something that's just like a big bump in the road to you that you've done? Um, the hardest thing for me to get used to uh, was actually, with the mindset of a producer, my mindset was always like, I don't care what other producers on the record, I don't care if it's Dr. Dre or Pharrell, I respect them, but I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna try to get as many records as I can and try to sell as many of my own tracks as I can and try to saturate the record with my sound. Um, but as an executive producer, you kind of have to forsake that mindset um, and you kind of have to flip it and start thinking, okay, well, I have all these other friends that are dope producers, let me bring them on the project. And you know, sometimes it may mean like you don't get you don't get records on the album. You know what I'm saying? Because you have to sacrifice that for the greater good of the album, you know. So that was the biggest that was the biggest paradigm shift for me, you know, mentally taking on that position. I know you mentioned uh Bro, like, weren't you like going back a little bit, man? About to your background, I know, like, with some names that these guys may be familiar with. You actually, I think, did a small run with Star Trek Entertainment for Rails label or Rails production yeah. team. Well, my publishing deal um, is through Star Trek, so Pharrell is really the one that kind of brought me in to this side of the game and brought me out to LA, and uh, I signed an EMI through him. So he kind of helped. You know, when I first started really, really producing. Um, we started finding acts together. We had a girl group that we did the whole record together. Like he did half of it, and I did half of it. So we, you know, that he kind of brought me in on that. End. Now, as like someone who executive produces, as then you actually make music, not just like overseeing the project. Does that? Do you actually take like um, like if you work on a project? Do you actually sit down and listen to a lot of tracks from other producers, or is it like you're solely working on it and you know it's kind of like a shut door, so to speak? Yeah, no, I don't take that approach. I know, uh, you know, because I've experienced that there are some people that do take that approach. Yeah. I take the total opposite approach, especially with this lap. Like with Jill's record, I made sure that I introduced her to all the producers I knew that I thought would be really good for her. And I made sure that I got them together so that that producer had the opportunity to be in front of the artist. Because I know as a producer, the best way to get the best material from an artist is to be there. Like it's really hard to shoot in the dark and send email tracks to 
the A and R who's gonna give it to the manager, who's gonna give it to the assistant, who's gonna give it to the producers. It's really hard to get chemistry like that. So I made it a point to introduce her to Warren Campbell, take her to the studio, let her get with him. I made it a point to make sure she got with Dre and the doll, make sure she got with uh, she got with Jam and Lewis, and I did that first. Then when once all of that was going and they were already on the schedule, then I put my other hat on and I was like, okay, I'm gonna take all these dudes out. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's how, you know, I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to totally make sure that, that it was understood that that was the role I wanted. I wanted just whatever was best for the record. Because I know at the end of the day, we just need to really make a great record. So that's cool, man. You kind of got the work and then you, told, you came back behind it, put your shine on it, and everything to finalize it. And talking about, kind of bring up a point too, I kind of want to address just who in here like actually works with artists, like actually in the studio, not just sending beats, but you're recording or a couple of y'all. With that, I know sometimes, I engineer, I know sometimes, man, during a session it can get, you know, pretty hectic, having to do the same take over and over and over. Sometimes maybe the, the vocalist or the artist kind of loses the mood or is not hitting it like they should. What's something that you have, like a specific tip or something that maybe you can help with, let a producer know to kind of get maybe an artist in the character of the song or get that feeling out of they need? What's something that you use? Uh, I, most of the people that know me, I'm, I'm pretty well known for having a whole lot of patience. So that's the reason that a lot of uh, a lot of the artists I work with are super vocally inclined. You know what I'm saying? They, they consider themselves real artists, and that takes time. Like you know, for Jill, like she's a perfect example. She doesn't. She will never go in the booth if she's not in the mood of the song that we're doing. So if she's she's not in that mood. It doesn't really matter if we have to get it done. Like she just won't go in there. And I'm the type of person I respect that. So. One thing I do is, you know, I try to set the stage before the artist gets there. I try to control the environment as much as I can. Like, if I know we really got to get something done, and I know that a whole lot of people in the studio will be distracting, then I'll have a conversation with everybody in the studio before she gets there. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Or if I know she needs to wind down, you know, I might meet her somewhere and we'll go eat. You know what I'm saying? Really. Um, Production we deal with artists, a lot of it is psychology, a lot of it is is being that shoulder to cry on, a lot of it is just being there for that person and allowing them the the room to breathe and the room to express themselves. And I you know, my my technique is that they'll they will ultimately guide their self to where they need to go. So just making them feel as comfortable as possible right now. Yeah. Do you have any uh, I don't want to put you on blast, do you have any artists maybe that were kinda of difficult to get into that mode? Uh <laughs> The hardest situation I ever worked with was, and she knows this because I said it to her, but I worked, I, I worked with SWV when Coco was pregnant and had braces. And that was probably <laughs> oh, my, the worst <laughs> session I've ever had. That was the hardest session. But we got through it, we got the record back. What did you, what did you use to, to do that? No, mommy asked me. I, I had to complete that one. I had to, I had to, I had to use a lot of charm and it, it just, you know, she wanted to sing, but she just, and it was at that point where the group was like, Coco was at the point where she was like, I, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but she did a lot of the vocals. So she was at a point where, hey, everybody else needs to kind of step up again, yeah, you know, step it up. They were, they were kind of at that point. Um, so I literally, I've never told anybody this, but to get her to do the backgrounds, I had to uh, have her sing the vamp, I had her sing the hook, but at the vamp of the song, so you know how the, at the vamp, the hook repeats, right? So I was like, Coco, okay, we're gonna sing the melody of the hook, and she sang the melody of the hook, and I was like, okay, well, we're gonna do it like church. Now you're gonna invert the hook, and you're gonna sing the third. So she sang it, and she sang the third. She did it all in one take. She sang the melody, and she sang the third, then she inverted, you know, like in church, when you keep going up, keep going up, keep going up. And then when she left, I took the melody, and I paced it up, and I had the stack. <laughs> so I had to get it like that because she didn't want to do, you know, she didn't want to do what she normally does. But that was probably the hardest. Madly, you don't want me to.